Good afternoon, tea friends, and welcome to Destination Tea's guide to how to set the proper afternoon tea table. And what you're going to notice today is that I have a low table, and of course, afternoon tea was also historically called a low tea because it was set on the low table in the parlor and served there. Share that we have just added new free resources on destinationtea.com. We've got a new section called Host a Tea, and it is basically there to help you plan a tea party at home. Um, because of course that's something that people have always done, and lately with social distancing, um, that's become even more popular. We've seen great pictures, beautiful, beautiful, beautifully decorated tables, and beautiful spreads and baking. Um, all over social media. So what we have added is a free tea party planner. So it's meant to be a very simple one pager that you can slip right into your purse when you go out shopping. It includes a place for you to organize your shopping list, your menu, your tea selection. Um, it's also got checklists so that you can remember everything we've talked about here, all of the different elements of your tea table setting. And um, we've also got up there a quick guide to tea menus so you can kind of differentiate from what's the difference between a cream tea and an afternoon tea anyway. What a lot of us are doing right now because we're um, staying at home and practicing social distancing is we've been ordering takeout teas. And I'm gonna have a post um, later this week because today we have ordered an afternoon tea from Ivy Tea House. My beautiful sister-in-law is going to be Zooming with us. So we both ordered teas from the same tea house and I highly suggest this. It was not my good idea. A lot of folks are posting about it on social media. So I love this idea. You set up a beautiful tea table. You, the food arrives magically, very little work. And then you go ahead and fill in your tiered trays. Now, I, so first you'll decide whether or not you'd like to use a tablecloth. Uh, You'll see throughout the course of this that I love my greens and blues. So I think that this table is so pretty. I'm gonna leave it just as it is. Also, I like um, simplicity when it means less work, less cleanup. Um, but tablecloths can certainly make a very beautiful setting for your table. So you can start out with that if you like. I'm just gonna start out with dessert plates. So these are um, just China dessert plates. You don't have to use China. But I want to encourage you to take your china outside. Why not? And set a beautiful tea table. And so that's going to be the anchor for each place setting. Unless, of course, you'd like to also use some kind of doily or placemat underneath. Next, what you're going to do is take your teacup and saucer and put them to the top right of each plate. And you've got your handle facing to the 3 o'clock on the clock. Um, reminder, and please check out our teacup etiquette video for more of these examples, but when you are sitting at a table where your cup is going to be more than a foot away from your face, you'll also pick up your saucer when you go to drink your tea, like so, okay? I've got a little bit of a concern about losing my teaspoon on that journey. So I like to do this a little bit differently, and I just, I'm just gonna lay them out to show off the embroidery. And then, now, let me, let me say something as far as utensils go. If you're serving a meal, an afternoon tea that includes a salad or a soup, of course you're going to need more utensils. If you decided to serve a garden salad, for example, so you would need a small luncheon fork to the left, or um, you would need a pastry fork, which you may place across the top, if you were going to serve a cake, um, and you would need those utensils. But today we're just having the traditional afternoon tea with the three courses. All you should ever need is a little teaspoon and a spreader for your condiments. You could use a saucer from a children's tea set or any small plate, decorative plate that you have. I like that to be there for any kind of um, catch-all you may need. For example, if you're straining your tea at the table, I like to decant my tea, brew and decant my tea, then bring it to serve. Um, but if you're going to have strainers at the table or infusers at the table, you want to have somewhere to place that and kind of put it to the side. Um, another thing is um, I also like the idea of having one of these for each guest because you're traditionally not supposed to take your 
used silverware and put it back onto the table. Um, so it's a nice place to have somewhere to rest it. Of course, um, if you watch our teacup etiquette video, you will know that you can take your used teaspoon and put it right across the back of your cup. But as I said earlier, you will be picking up your saucer. You will be maneuvering this. And if you have a little bit of um, a confidence issue with adding the teaspoon to that balancing act, then it's nice to have somewhere else to put it to the side. So now we're ready to serve the tea. If you're serving an iced tea, I suggest a beautiful pitcher, of course, or if you're serving a hot tea, either way, your teas are probably gonna be one of the last things to come out to the table because you'd like to keep them at temperature, whether you're serving them hot or iced. Um, same thing with the creamer, which of course is not filled with cream, it's filled with milk. And um, this is something that, of course, you'd like to keep chilled until it comes out to the table um, because we are doing an outdoor afternoon tea today. And then finally, your sweetener, whatever um, sweetener is of your choosing. And I didn't bring that out here today, but of course, you may also have a little honey pot if you're interested in serving honey with your tea. I want to say a tear tray I absolutely love. And of course, that is the traditional piece to use in afternoon tea. But of course, you are welcome to bring out some of your favorite serving dishes and do your courses like that. Um, sometimes people like to do scones in a basket kind of covered with a linen cloth because they like them. They like to make them warm and keep them to temperature. So you can get as creative as you like. But I will say if you're outdoors, and you're using a table that's not as large as maybe a traditional dining room table, you may wanna do something like stacking like this just because it's saving you a little bit of real estate here. Okay. So we're almost ready to enjoy our afternoon tea. A couple of finishing touches. These are china. I think of them as mini ramekins, but that's not officially. This one is more like a little tiny mini bowl. So pretty, they've got little flowers paint on the side. And I found these thrift store shopping. So I love a little container like this. If you'd like to serve your clotted cream or your lemon curd or your preserves elegantly. Um, final finishing touches for centerpieces. I love the idea for an outdoor tea of using what you have on your property. I've just gone around and snipped a couple of pretty flowering plants around the yard and very simply just something to adorn your table to make it look a little bit festive and to, to kind of bring together the season and bring the season to the table. From all of us at Destination Tea, thank you for watching. Be sure to share all of your social media posts with us by tagging us, hashtag Destination Tea. There are a lot of things competing with my voice right now out here. I need a good system. <laughs> okay, so. With friends. I hope that you heard every leaf blower, every bird, every beautiful breeze, every plane, every delivery truck, and every child opening the back door of the house. My kids are laughing at me right now. You guys want to be in this video? Thank you so much for watching Destination Tea's outdoor video starring the birds, the wind, the airplanes, the cars driving by, my neighbor next door, and my neighbor on the other side. And me. <laughs>